Hi, I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. Today I want to talk about the health of your pancreas. You see, pancreatic cancer has become huge and it's one of the most deadly cancers where there are not too many treatments available. Okay, and we have to understand that it starts off from the pancreas. So when we address the root cause of any issue, today pancreatitis, like 1 in 10 people have pancreatitis where their pancreas get swollen and inflamed. They cannot digest food the right way. They have insane amounts of acidity. They have indigestion. They have food particles in their stools. All of this reflects on how your pancreas and your digestive system works. Without your pancreas, you cannot live. And today, with today's poor lifestyle of people binge drinking alcohol, uh, excessive smoking and the wrong diets and very, very high fat diets but the wrong quality of fats, we are slowly messing up our pancreas. And you just don't have an issue with your, uh, with your digestion. You have an issue with sugar, with insulin, with diabetes. So we have to understand today everyone thinks diabetes is about your sugar levels post and pre, you know, your early morning sugar levels, your after meal sugar levels. It's connected with your pancreas left. If you are only being treated for your sugar levels and your doctor and your health professional is not looking at the health of your pancreas, you want to make an immediate change because your pancreas are responsible for your blood sugar levels as well the production of your insulin and everything else. So if you have inflammation in your pancreas, it is also going to affect your insulin levels and in turn your blood sugar levels and in turn your diabetes. Even when a patient has type 1 diabetes, okay, we all say that it cannot be reversed, it's an autoimmune condition, yes and yes. But we fail to look at the health of the pancreas overall. Why? Why are my pancreatic cells dying? Why aren't they able to produce insulin? So we got to see the human body is always giving you signals all the time through symptoms. So we have to address the root cause of that. Today we're going to learn how to look after your pancreas. And if you have these symptoms, take care of it right now. Because pancreatitis, which is inflammation, can become into a more deadly inflammatory condition like a pancreatic cancer. So do not ignore these symptoms and look after your pancreas. Number one, okay? If you have a poor gallbladder, if you constantly have gallbladder stones and you're making them, it reflects on your lifestyle and it reflects on your diet. And gallstones in your gallbladder and poor gallbladder effect can affect the working of your pancreas. A very important function of your pancreas is to secrete digestive enzymes. You see, when we eat food, our food has to be broken down. There are enzymes that break down protein. Example, trypsin. There are enzymes that break down carbohydrates, example, amylase. And there are enzymes that break down fat, example, lipase. All of these are secreted by the pancreas. If your pancreas are inflamed and you cannot secrete these enzymes, guess what? You have undigested food in your body. Your body can't break them down because your pancreas cannot produce sufficient amount of enzymes. So what happens is we produce more acid, we have indigestion, it affects our small intestines, our large intestines and everything else. We have a bigger problem. We don't assimilate the food because it's not digested. So now we have a problem of malnourishment. We think we're eating healthy, but we're not absorbing all of the vitamins. So for people with pancreatitis and swollen and inflamed pancreas, one of the biggest deficiencies are vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K. All of these four vitamins are necessary for every single function of your cells, your brain, your organs, your heart, and everything else. So you see, we just go on popping supplements and vitamins, but we don't correct the root cause of the problem, which could be your pancreas. So we need to understand that everything to do with digestion, your pancreas are involved. That's why sometimes your doctor may put right down an amylase test because he wants to see if your pancreas are able to produce the enzyme that can break down your carbohydrates. A well a well-functioning body, an efficient body, has the enzymes to break down carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. We don't have to fear these things. We've got to fear the wrong quality of fats and the wrong quality of carbohydrates. But eating the right quality of carbohydrates and the right quality of protein and right quality of fats is not a problem because we have the mechanism to break it down. So we shouldn't be scared of that. Now, what happens if you have pancreatitis? How can we look after our pancreas, especially if you have pancreatitis or any issue with your pancreas? Unfortunately, you have to get off meat. You cannot have organ meat. You cannot have non-veg for a while. You want to reduce your total inflammation. So your diet's going to have fruits and vegetables, okay, high fatty foods, okay? I have nothing against the keto diet, but I can tell you the amount of damage that a keto diet has done to someone who has gallbladder problems, someone who has gallstones, and someone who has pancreatitis. In fact, we've had people admitted to hospitals. Because we have to understand, like I said, I don't have an issue with a keto diet. If you do it the right way, respect it. But remember, when you have pancreatitis or you have a gallstone issue, you have to be on a low-fat diet. 
and a keto is a high fat diet. So maybe you can do it when you don't have these problems, but if you have these problems, a keto diet is going to mess you up, mess you up completely by putting so much of stress on your pancreas, which are unable to produce the enzymes to break down fat. So imagine you're eating all the fat because a keto diet tells you to do that, but you don't have the enzymes to break down fat. What's going to happen? Use your common sense. Use your common sense. What is going to happen? So like I said, don't jump onto diets without really being analyzed the right way. Do you have these problems? Okay, so if you have a gallbladder issue and you have pancreatitis or any pancreatic issue, being on a keto diet or a high fat diet is the worst thing that you can ever do. Remember that. So now in your diet, you need to understand if you have these symptoms, you've got to go low fat. Okay, you can eat fat. Don't get me wrong. You can have your avocados, you can have your nuts, your seeds. The oils that we want to use are MCTs, medium chain triglycerides, found in coconut oil. You know why? Because your pancreas don't have to put in burden to break down these oils. Because these oils get converted from fat into energy in the liver. So it keeps your pancreas free. Every other oil that you have has to go. Your pancreas have to work to break it down. So always remember that. Coconut oil, PO ghee, these are the better fats for you when you have gallstones and when you have pancreatitis, but you cannot overdo it. That's why uh, I'm not a fan of people eating every two to three hours, but when you have a condition, it's like pancreatitis, or you're recovering from it, you may want to space out your meals. You may want to have smaller meals, maybe five to six times a day, so that you don't put too much of burden of one large meal on your pancreas or on your digestive system. Other than that, the diet is pretty cool. All of your vegetables, your nuts, your seeds, uh, your good grains, your whole grains, your legumes. Your legumes are excellent. You need a high-protein diet, remember that. For the repair to happen, you need protein. You can't repair any part of your body without protein. So yes, go low-fat, but high protein. And when I say low fat, <clears throat> your overall consumption of fat can be normal, but it is consumed in spaces, in intervals across the day. All right? You want to stay off fried foods and deep fried foods. If you want to stimulate pancreatitis or make the attack worse, or your gallstones make them worse, eat fried food and deep fried food. Okay? But do not do that when you have this problem. Okay, you've got to go slow. It's not a permanent thing. As you get better, as the inflammation comes down, you can slowly reintroduce these foods into your life. But when you have these symptoms, gallstones, pancreatitis, pancreatic cancers, absolutely no. You cannot have deep fried. You cannot have fried. You will put too much of oxidative stress on your organs. <clears throat> potato chips. Can't do potato chips. Junk food. White sugar is the worst to stimulate inflammation when you have that. Mayonnaise. Full of fat, you cannot do that. You cannot do full fat dairy as well. You would either do low fat dairy, but to me, low fat dairy is useless. So then you may want to do maybe almond milk or something else like that. You know, rice milk or whatever it is, or just stay off dairy. It's as simple as that. Aerated drinks will make you worse. Consumption of, overconsumption of coffee. There are people who have five to six to seven mugs of coffee. Do not do this. Okay, you will inflame your, pancrea, your, your pancreas. I had a patient who had high blood pressure and severe pancreatitis, eight cups of coffee a day. We cut it down to four, the symptoms didn't disappear. We cut it down to one, every single symptom disappeared. And that's why I'm telling you again, if you are fasting, fast the right way. Fasting with black coffee is not fasting. That is the West way of doing it and we don't follow what the West tells us to do all the time. It doesn't make sense putting something highly acidic in your body that is clean and is fasting. Secondly, today, scientifically, coffee stimulates the gallbladder to work. You don't need your gallbladder to be activated when you are fasting. So be careful of doing coffee in your fast. Let's understand, anyone can fast if they're allowed to drink coffee. Okay, anyone can fast if they're allowed to do coffee. You do not do coffee when you're fasting. If you're doing the fad way of fasting, do what you want. But remember, you're not fasting the right way. So be careful of that. I spoke about the deficiency of vitamin A, D, and K. So you want to see your doctors because they might put you on vitamins. They may put you on a multivitamin because you are deficient. If your pancreas are not working the right way, you are not absorbing vitamins and minerals. That's why a lot of patients lose weight. They start looking old. Their skin starts sagging. They have hair fall. They have pigmentation in their skin because they're not... They are not absorbing vitamins. So you can put all the creams and the oils on your face and your hair, but it's an inside-out job. When you want to look good on the outside, you've got to make sure the inside is working well for you. Eat slow. Eat slow and chew your food. The more you chew your food, remember saliva. The more saliva we generate, we are producing amylase and lipase in our saliva. So even if you're producing less enzymes with your pancreas, you still start digestion in the mouth. So slow down and chew your food really, really well. You do not want to consume high fiber because high fiber will slow down the process of digestion, which is already slowed down. So you can have fiber in your vegetables, fruits, all of that stuff, but no, do not be on a high fiber fruit. 
So anything to do with coconut, coconut oil, cold press, coconut cream, coconut milk, these are the better fats for you if you have pancreatitis or gallbladder issues because again, like I said, it gets converted from fat into energy in the liver. That burden gets off the pancreas completely. So look after your pancreas. You've got to sleep well. When you sleep well, inflammation comes down. If you're too stressed, we produce inflammation in every part of the body. Exercise. The more blood circulation, the more blood that reaches every single organ of your body and cell of your body nourishes it and cleans it the same way. So if you're sedentary, you know, all of these things happen. Binge drinking alcohol, smoking, all of these things, you are going to destroy your pancreas at some point. So you may want to make an informed decision. Unfortunately, you can't get a pancreatic uh, a replacement, a transplant. Today, the mentality of most people we come across as, oh, look, if my kidney gets messed up, I'll just get a new kidney. Oh, I can get a heart transplant. Oh, I can get a liver transplant. You think it's that easy. It isn't. And for your pancreas, you don't have that choice. So look after your body. Respect your body. Look after it, and it will look after you. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.